So we're going to talk about perspective, and I think a lot of things with conflicts is do you really have the right perspective about what you do? So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. The first question is do you know how good you really are at what you do? Do you have any idea how good that you really are? How many of you know how good that you're the best at what you do? Can I tell you that every community that you're in, no matter where, across the country, you are the largest food service operation in that community. Do you know that? There's nobody that serves more kids. Let me ask this. Who do you think this is? More than 95,000 restaurants, over 5 billion meals served annually, and sales greater than $10 billion a year. Who do you think that is? It is the National School Lunch Program. It is you. You're the largest food service operation in the world. Did you know that? There's nobody larger. Nobody does more. Nobody serves more people. And from the hours of 11 to 1230, it's amazing what you guys accomplish. 1030. Okay. 1030 to 12. Okay. So whenever you serve lunch, it is amazing all the things you're able to accomplish. It just is. How many kids you get through this. So I think that's the first thing is you know how good you are. So take, take, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and say this after me. Say, I am great. I am great. Now, look at the one thing I see about people is that we have so many things going on in our lives, and we sometimes forget that other people have things going on in their lives, too. You know, and when we look at conflict, you know, because really, we've all, we've all, we all kind of came up thinking that it's all about who? It's all about me, right? But it really ain't. Matter of fact, it ain't at all. And that's, that's the thing. And, and, but I found in my life that, and again, you know, I'm not, gonna sh I'm not an expert. I'm going to share with you things that have worked in my life and that I put in place and that have just been wonderful, have had wonderful results. But what I found is that when you put other people first, you know what happens? You know what they do in, 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 in turn? They put you first. You know, most of the time we, we're so busy thinking about what we're going to say that we don't listen to what's being said. So let's talk a little bit about how you get ready. And one of the things you got to talk about when you're getting ready, when you know that you're going to have, if you, if you feel a conflict coming, one of the things you have to do is prepare yourself. Well, how do you prepare yourself? You prepare yourself by telling them, I am going to tell this so-and-so off. I can't wait to get them in front of me, man. I'm going to let them have it. Is that what you're telling yourself? Because that's what you're telling yourself. What you're telling yourself is I'm going to have a fight. Okay? Instead of, you know, I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to listen. I'm going to try to understand. And I'm going to do my very best. To, to, to reach out to them because the ultimate thing is we don't I mean, we don't want to fight. How many people want to fight? How many people want to fight every day? Now there are people that do, but I'm not one of them. And happiness is not found that way. So what are you telling yourself and what are you telling others? And how are you preparing yourself? How are you holding yourself? Are you putting yourself in the position to power? So I want to do this real quick. Everybody stand up. I'm going to do a brain hack. I'm going to do a brain hack. Can you can a hack your brain for a second? I'm going to do a brain hack, okay? That's what I want to do. I want everybody to take your hands and reach as high above your head as you can. Both of them, both hands. I know I can't. So as high as you can, just go up your tiptoes, make a fist, make a fist, bring it down, hold them down, put them on your side, and stand tall and strong. Okay, and I want you to hold that for a couple of minutes. I'm going to for just a second. I'm going to tell you why. Okay, what you're doing is you're actually changing the physiology of your body and your brain right now. You're, you have the power to do your body. Harvard did a study, and Harvard found this out, that if they could get people to hold a power, hold it, hold it, keep holding it for a second. If you get people to hold a power position for about a minute to two minutes, what happened is they actually changed their physiology. They changed the way they thought. Have a seat. Have a seat. By holding different power positions, you can actually change the, the hormones in your body. See, by doing that one little simple thing that you were doing there, you, you've made your cortisol, which is your stress hormone, go down by about 15 to 17%. And by you made your testosterone, and ladies, y'all got testosterone too. Okay? You made your testosterone go up by about 20%. You made yourself more powerful just by the way you stood. Okay? They also, so when people say, you've heard fake it till you make it? You can actually fake it till you become it. You can hold the power position and change it. So if you've ever got a conflict coming and you're feeling, oh my God, you know, I'm going to kill this person, or you know, I, 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 I'm not feeling myself, I'm not feeling up to this, go in the bathroom, okay, and hold the power position. You know, the best power position is this one right here. That's the one that raises your testosterone, raises, lowers your cortisol as fast as anything else. Stand in the bathroom, you know, hold your arms up, okay? <laughs> 
I do that a lot of times before I'll speak. If I'm feeling nervous or I'm tired or something, I'll go and hold the power position, and it changes my entire the way I'm thinking just after a couple of minutes. So you really can't do this. And the interesting thing about this position is, you know, we're wired this way. Because babies are children that are blind from birth. I mean, they've never seen daylight. When they play a game and they win, you know what they do? Throw their arms up. That's exactly right. Because this is the way we're wired. So now, how everybody do this for me? Say the word issue. Issue. Okay, say the word issue a little bit louder and a little bit slower. Issue. Now, say it a little bit louder and a little bit slower still. Issue. I found out this. I found out this. In the conflict that I've been in, now, the, the forward to my book, Dealing with Difficult People, says this book is dedicated to my beautiful wife, Melissa, and my wonderful children, Wesley and Lydia, because they taught me more than, more than anything else about the subject of dealing with difficult people. And it goes on to say dot, 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 because I realized more often than not that it was not them, but it was me. And that's what I realized. I think that's a big part of conflict is realizing that you have a giant, giant amount of influence over how the thing is going to go. By just how you, and I do a communication class, and I do, I do it a lot, and all over the country, and one of the things I talk about is body language. You know, when I argue with my wife, the best way for me to argue with my wife is on the phone. Because I'm very facial. So when she, I'm arguing with her, she says something, I don't agree with that, she can't see me go, oh. But I realize that, and so when I get in arguments or conflicts with people or have discussions where I know I'm going to be a little bit of a conflict, Take a deep breath and I really fight. You'll actually see me sometimes biting my lip. You know, doing this. Because I'm, I'm really making a physical effort because I know that's something about me. Does that make sense? And you all know the things about you that take people off. You know, don't you? For the most part. You know, so, you know, always remember, the first thing about, well, how can I make this situation better first before you turn it on to somebody else? So, poor communication generally centers around not listening. Now, my grandma told me God gave you two ears and one mouth using what? Proportionately, right? And so that's the thing that we've been, I've been working on my life. I, I like, I, I'm like, you know, I'm probably shocked y'all know that I like to talk, okay? So, you know, one of the things I've learned about myself is I need to take a deep breath and I need to let the other person finish. You know, the number one most obnoxious thing that people that he polls, the number one obnoxious thing other people do to someone is they interrupt their sentences. You know that? You know, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, and you know what I'm going to say, so you just interrupt me and just answer my question before I get a chance to finish. You may have heard it a hundred times. It may be the first time I've ever asked it. Does that make sense? Take the time to listen. And I heard it. How many of you got gospelers in the kitchen? How many managers we got here? And director levels. Okay, so most of you. Great. Okay, now gossip is a tough thing to deal with. And gossip is one of those things that you have to deal with. You can't let it go. Because if you let it, gossip is one of those things that does not get better. Do you agree with that? So one of the things that I've done in my company and what I've done in my life and when I've had management roles with people where I find two people gossiping about each other or somebody gossiping about me or whatever, you know, I confront it. I confront it. But you have to do it in the right way. You can't go, look, you got to shut up or something to slap you. You, know? you can't do that. Although that may be true, you know, you can't do that. You know, you have to take, so you have to address it directly. And the best way to address a gospel directly is in private. It's not in front of the rest of the kitchen. Because most of the time they're going to deny it. And if they deny it and you confront them in front of the rest of the staff, what have you just called them in front of everybody? A liar. And there is no good end to that. Because then you've got all kinds of problems. So the best way to just confront it individually, in the dry storage room, in an office, in the director's office, somewhere where you can be private, you can have a conversation about what's the problem. And if there's two people and, and you know that they're both at each other, my recommendation is to talk to both of them individually and then bring them together. You know, there's no, there's no way to handle conflict. And the old way to handle conflict is you address the person first, then you bring them together, and if that doesn't work, then you take them before a, a larger group. Okay? And that's the fact that you're going to walk out of the store and that you're going to be a cheerleader. You're going to be the good finder. You're going to be the person that lifts up other people. You're going to be the sunshine in somebody else's life. Can you do that for me? Yeah. 
Yes. Okay, listen, God bless you all. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I appreciate all your time.